Neck pain still not going away and you're tired of doing all the stretches? Here's what you should be doing instead. My name is Dr. Nick from Preferred Physical Therapy, where we specialize in helping folks over 40 stay active and independent, live free from painkillers, and avoid surgery. One of the most common causes of persistent neck pain is neck weakness. Many folks who suffer from low back pain know they need to do core exercises in order to get relief. What many neck pain sufferers don't know is strengthening the neck is just as vital. Often that tense spasmy feel that neck pain sufferers get feels like they need to stretch when actually it's a symptom of weakness instead. And we don't pay enough attention to the strengthening component of recovery as we do a flexibility component of recovery. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to strengthen your neck through all three planes of movement. The reality that we're all living with is as we get older, our muscles get weaker. And the percent at which our muscles get weaker actually increases every decade that we live. So many folks don't realize that even though we've been going along just fine and our strength has been just fine, our neck muscles, our core muscles, they all get weaker as we get older. And if we're not intentional about keeping them strong, their weakness then poses problems causing neck pain, often conditions called degenerative joint disease, degenerative disc disease, any kind of that joint arthropathy. These are all common diagnoses that you'll see on an MRI or x-ray report. All of these conditions try to explain the cause of pain in the neck. The reality that we're all facing is all of our muscles are on a state of decline or weakening. It's called sarcopenia. What happens is every decade that we're alive, the rate at which our muscles get weaker actually goes up. It becomes vital that we include a strengthening program into our exercise regimen. But don't overlook the neck. So often people with persistent neck pain will overlook strengthening specifically the neck muscles, just like many folks overlook strengthening muscles of the core. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to strengthen the neck muscles in all three planes of movement. In particular, muscles of the neck and upper shoulders are so vital because of how important they are in posture, but also in everyday use, particularly as we become either a bit more iphotic, which is a curvature in a thoracic spine, or we do a lot more things looking down, whether we're cooking, cleaning, at a table or desk, doing office work. Every time we come into this position, our postural stabilizers need to be strong enough to sufficiently carry that load of our head, neck, and shoulder. And again, what happens over time is as our muscles get weaker, this load becomes heavier and heavier to bear, which is why a lot of folks get all kinds of spasm and tension across the neck and back and shoulders. We want to massage, we want to stretch, we get temporary or very little relief with that, and we continue to get persistent neck pain. And it's because the muscles aren't conditioned to sufficiently combat those postures. There's two classes of muscles in the back side of the neck that I want to go over. The first set are the ones in this, this upper head and neck area. These are called the suboccipital muscles. These are fine motor movers of the neck. The reason why these are so important is because they contribute to a lot of tension headaches. So a lot of this back of the head pain, even some headache pain that comes around to the front, these suboccipital muscles are the ones that do our fine motor movements, which is just easy movements of our head and neck. Often it's when we're keeping our eyes stable on a target and our head is moving, these are the muscles that are directly correlated to fine motor movements of our head. The other ones are our primary movers of the head and neck. And what that means is all these big muscles that go from the back of the head all the way down into the shoulder, even down and anchor into the middle thoracic spine. We have big muscle movers that go all the way from the middle of the spine, out to the shoulders, and up into the back of the head. There's two types of muscles that we wanna be cognizant of as we strengthen our head and neck. The primary posture stabilizers are these ones that go across the middle of the back, and up to the back of the head. So trapezius muscle underneath that, some rhomboid, and then we have some big splenius capitis, splenius services, and then we have a bunch of segmental spinal stabilizers, still called the multifidi. These go up all the way down the spine, but these now segmentally help control posture and stabilize movement throughout the head and neck. These are the ones that will get tight, particularly with any kind of muscle tension or ache. These are the ones that have the trigger points out into the side that tend to be so aggravating. Some even that will come down here and feel like they're trigger points into the muscle and sometimes they are, but mostly those are coming from injuries to the neck. We have another video that describes cloward signs and what you should be doing if you have this kind of pain in this middle thoracic spine. We'll put a link in the description below about that video. 
And so what often happens is you can imagine if the shoulder blades spread out this way and then our head and neck dip down this way, this puts a lot of strain or stress across these muscles that need to be able to sustain that posture. And what's problematic about that posture is muscles have a length tension relationship, meaning that the longer they're stretched out, the harder it is for them to stay strong. Same with the shorter they are. If we pull everything back into a shortened position, they similarly are weaker versus when they are in a mid-range position. So that middle range of movement is when those muscles are the strongest. So it's extremely important as we understand what position that we're in and what postures we're sustaining, that we're able to strengthen those muscles in those positions. So how do you know if your neck muscles are weak? A simple test is in rotation, rotate as far as you can and then bring your hand over and provide a little bit of overpressure. Can you go further than you can by yourself? If you can go further, then that means you have some weakness in your muscles. Same thing the other side. We wanna go as far as we can. Once we can't go any further, a little bit of overpressure to go further. Can we go further? If you can go a little bit further, that's fine. But if you notice, oh, there's quite a bit more space I can go, but my muscles aren't strong enough to get me there, then we know we have inherent muscle weakness. This is a simple, quick and easy test just for the cervical spine. The next one is the same with flexion. The way flexion and extension, the way that you need to do that one is we'll show you laying down. If we come up all the way as far as we can, can we go further? If we can go further, then we have some neck muscle weakness. A quick test to see if your neck flexors are weak. Bring your head up, leaving your spine down, chin to chest. Can you go further? If you can go further, then we have some inherent neck weakness. Ideally, you should be able to bring your chin to your chest. And if you can't rest your chin to your chest, then we have some restriction or tightness. If we can't do it actively, like there's a little bit there, but it's, it's very small, no big deal. And then extension, same thing off the edge of the table or the bed. How's my extension? And then extend up. And now on that one, very little movement at the top. So for this one, hang your head off the edge of your bed. You're gonna extend up just with your neck and then a little bit of overpressure. Can you get any further? And in this case, can't get any further. So if you notice, you can get to here and then you push and you can go further. Okay, then we have some neck weakness that we wanna work on. And then side bend will be the same thing. So we wanna be able to side bend our head all the way. And then, so this one, I can, I can go a little bit further as I put some overpressure. So this is an area where I could work on a little bit more because I can lift just a slight bit more, not a ton more. So what you'll notice, if you get to here and then you can raise up quite a bit more, then we know we've got some neck weakness. And then same thing on the other side. So you're gonna wanna test both sides. I just demonstrated the right side. You wanna do the same thing to the left side to see what your strength is on that side. The neck is responsible for three planes of motion. We call this flexion and extension is looking up. We have side bend or side flexion, and then we have rotation. Now, what we mostly concern ourselves with is extension and rotation. Flexion comes fairly easy. We don't necessarily work on that range of motion a ton, but it's the motion that our neck tries to prevent or support against. And so that's why it's hugely important that from a flex position, we have strength throughout the entire range of our flexion ability. The first exercise is an introductory level to strengthen the neck. And these are simple isometrics, meaning that we push and hold into resistance. In this case, I'm gonna sit up big and tall, put my hand on my forehead, and I'm gonna push my head forward, but not let my head win. So I'm gonna push heavy into my hand. I'm gonna hold five seconds. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, five. And now I'm gonna go behind, and I'm gonna push backwards. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four one thousand five this is backwards like I'm trying to extend and look up okay so we're gonna do that for five seconds and then to the side I'm gonna tip over one one thousand two one thousand three one thousand four one thousand five same thing other side one one thousand two one thousand three one thousand four one thousand five the last one's rotation put your hand high up on your cheekbone stay off of your jawbone but broad and high up on your cheekbone and I'm gonna try and look over my shoulder one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, five, and then same thing to the other side. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, five. And you can vary in intensity. You can push as hard as you can. You can push it lightly. The biggest thing is that you're pushing without any neck pain. But we want you to push as hard as you can without pain. Don't think that because some is good, more has to be better and I'm gonna fight through the pain. That's not the purpose. What we want to remind you of, we want the right pain for the right gain. So only push enough to where the pain is not there and then you hold at that level of resistance. That's level one, isometric. You're gonna start with those exercises and you're gonna do those every day, once a day. And pay attention to how you feel the next day. If you're feeling a little bit sore from that, 
then give yourself one day rest in between. Same reason why weightlifters don't go to the gym and do bicep curls every single day. We want to give those muscles a chance to recover. Your neck is no different. Often though, the intensity of these exercises isn't enough to elicit that kind of neck soreness, like muscle soreness. If it does for you in that case, that's fine. Give yourself a day break in between. Otherwise, kind of like a warm up. I want you doing these exercises every day because they're going to help those muscles be as efficient as possible. Your next exercise is you're going to lay down on your back, come up to the edge of your bed, and just let your head come off the edge a little bit. Don't be totally unsupported, but just off the edge a little bit. From here, you're going to bring your chin down to your chest. So it's going to look like this. And from here, we're going to count five seconds. Tuck that chin in, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, and then back down. Slow and controlled all the way throughout. We're going to bring that chin down to our neck and then curl it up. 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5. We're going to do this 10 times. Okay, the next exercise, you're going to roll to your side and we're going to move into a side bend. So let your head be unsupported down to the table. Stay big and tall and then we're going to rise up to the side. This is small hold at the top, not a ton. We call these isotonic, meaning that it's the same movement. Small hold at the top, like a one second hold at the top, slow and controlled on the way down. We're doing this 15 times. If you only get to 10 before you need to take a break, that's fine. Listen to your body and we do the same thing to the other side. We're doing these 15 times as well. If at any point you're feeling neck pain, neck spasm, stop, wait a minute, go back to the isometric phase, the introductory phase of exercises and stay there a little bit longer. This means those muscles aren't quite ready yet for that load. The other option is that you only work within the range which you have no pain. So if you notice that going all the way down and all the way up is causing pain, then only go partially down and then partially up. Stay in a range that is pain free. This is a progressive or gradual increase in load and intensity. So it allows your body time to adapt to those loads. The next exercise is going to be for extension. So you're going to be propped up onto your elbows. And I like it in this position because we're going to work those upper occipital muscles as well as all our primary movers into extension. So we're going to do two for one in this one exercise. And what you're going to do is on your elbows, push your body away. This is called protraction. So we're going to push our body away, hold, bring our chin down to our chest. And then from here, we're going to retract up and then extend. So it's a chin tuck with extension. And we're going to just come up to the top, pause two seconds, and then come back down. So chin tuck and then extend. We're working those suboccipitals and all of our cervical extensors. We're going to do this 15 times. If you notice your shoulders are getting tired earlier, that's okay. Take a break if you need to roll them out, that's okay. It's important that we work, these are called scapular stabilizers or stabilizers for the thoracic and shoulder blade area as we do our extension with retraction. And then, next exercise, what you're gonna do, same, push your arms away and then we're gonna rotate. Rotate your head as far as you can and here we're gonna hold. We're gonna five second hold. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, five and then come back and then we're gonna do the other side. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, five and we're gonna come back. We're gonna do both sides 10 times so it's 20 total movements. Again, if your shoulders are getting tired, that's okay. Take a break, let them rest. They're a part of the process. It's a similarly important move to work rotation. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, five, and back the other side. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, five. So there you have it. We went over the reason why neck strengthening is so important. It's vital. Think of it as core strengthening for the neck. Just like we do core strengthening to mitigate back pain, we're doing core strengthening to help with our neck pain, particularly because our neck muscles, like all muscles, get weaker over time. We went over two phases of strengthening. One is an isometric phase, which is an introductory phase to help the neck muscles be introduced to what movements and what loads, what resistance is appropriate for it. And then we went through the elevated phase, which is more of an isotonic phase. It's a strengthening program through movement. If at any time you have discomfort or pain with those moves, please pause, either go back to the introductory level or go into a space that you have no pain, a range of motion that you have no pain, and you can still perform the exercise as intended, but no pain. These are exercises I highly encourage you to do throughout the rest of your life. You integrate these into an exercise program that you're already doing 
in order to stay active and independent and live free from painkillers. Like all muscles of our body, as they get weaker, we want to be intentional with keeping them strong and healthy. That's what allows us to be free moving and active throughout our adult years, particularly as we anticipate what's gonna to happen to us over the next one to two decades of life. If you found any of this video helpful, please consider subscribing to our channel and take a look at our neck pain playlist where you'll find more videos with helpful tips like this one. A few years later. One thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand.